Hello my dear students and welcome back to Zenit Tutorials. Today we are studying a very important chapter of biology that is the circulatory system. Now children all organisms including humans have some fluids flowing in their bodies. Now these fluids constitute the distributing system and the collecting system. The distributing system to supply substances and the collecting substances to pick up substances to and fro the various parts of the body. Now in this video lesson we will be talking about the circulatory fluids in our body and in the next coming videos we will be studying about their functions, their properties and the blood circulatory system that, that is through human heart how does it circulate. Let's begin our first lecture of the circulatory system. Now children what is the need of transport inside our body? Now every organ of our body requires the involvement of these circulatory fluids. Okay. For example first our digestive system. The digestive system digests and absorbs the nutrients and passes the nutrients to all the body parts. So here it requires the circulation of fluids. Second the respiratory system. Now the respiratory system draws in air and the oxygen that is there in the air is picked up by lungs and through the fluid sent to different parts of the body. Now there also the carbon dioxide from different parts of the body is drawn back to the lungs and it is exhaled out. So here also it involves the circulation of fluids. Now third is the excretory system. Now in the excretory system all the excess water, excess salts, nitrogenous waste like urea etc has to be thrown out of the body. So all of them are done through the excretory system and this involves the circulation of fluids. Fourth that is the endocrine system. All of us know that endocrine glands secrete some hormones. So these hormones are passed in the blood. The blood carries it to whichever place it is required. So here also the circulation of fluids is very important. So these four points you should remember in need of transport in our body. Now children there are three basic fluids in our body. First blood, second tissue fluid and third lymph. Now blood is contained in heart and the blood vessels namely artery, veins and capillaries. Now where is tissue fluid present? Tissue fluid is present between the spaces of the cells. So if there are cells in between the cells there are some spaces. So between the spaces in the cell in any organ. Now lymph. Lymph is contained within the lymph vessels and the lymphatic organs such as spleen and tonsils. Now here you can see a diagrammatic representation of blood, lymph and tissue fluids. So here in red it is oxygenated blood, in blue it is deoxygenated blood, in green you can see the lymph and here you can see there are cells and in between the cells there is space. So there the fluid that is present is called tissue fluid. Watch the diagram very carefully, understand it well and if possible just pause the video and just draw this diagram. Now from this diagram children it's very clear that blood is flowing in closed vessels. Okay? So whenever blood flows in closed vessel and goes to the heart and different organs of the body that type of a circulation is called closed circulation and the system is called closed blood circulatory system. So as against this in many animals like insects the blood flows through open spaces and such type of a circulatory system is called open blood circulatory system. Now our next topic is the properties of blood. The first property of blood is that it is never stationary. It keeps on moving from heart to body parts and from body parts to heart. So it is always in a constant motion. Now second property is its color. Now children blood is a thick fluid and the oxygen rich blood is bright red in color. Whereas the deoxygenated blood or the blood that is carrying carbon dioxide is dark red in color. You must have seen in many diagrams that oxygenated blood is shown as red and deoxygenated blood is shown as blue. But this is not the exact case. See. Uh, Oxygenated blood is bright red and deoxygenated blood is dark red. But whenever you look at the prominent veins especially in the hands 
and especially of old people, you can see that there is some bluish liquid. So you'll say that no ma'am, uh, color of the deoxygenated blood is blue and veins carry blue blood. No, this is due to less thicker muscular walls of the veins. So that is not blue in color, that is dark red in color. Now the third property is its volume. So an adult human body contains at a time 5 to 6 liters of blood. Fourth point is its taste. Blood is saltish in taste and it has an alkaline nature. It is slightly alkaline and has a pH of 7.3 to 7.45. After studying the properties of blood, let us go on to the functions of blood. Now children, the function of blood can be studied under two broad categories. First, transport and second is protection. First, let us study transport by blood. First is transport of digested food. So in the alimentary canal, whatever food we digest, the nutrients is absorbed in the blood and it is taken to each and every cell of our body. Second is transport of oxygen. Now it occurs from the lungs to the tissues. Now in the blood, there is hemoglobin. The hemoglobin and oxygen combines to form a compound oxyhemoglobin. And then when it goes to different body tissues, it breaks up and oxygen is given to that body tissue. The third function is transportation of carbon dioxide. So from the tissue where carbon dioxide is in excess, hemoglobin combines with carbon dioxide and forms carbaminohemoglobin. Now this compound also travels through blood and then breaks up and gives CO2 and this CO2 is expelled through lungs. The next function is transport of excretory material. Now we have already discussed that whatever excretory material are there, for example, salt, excess water, urea, they all are removed through excretory system. Now these wastes are carried from the tissues to the liver, kidney and skin and expelled out. Next is distribution of hormones. So wherever, so our endocrine glands produce hormones and wherever these hormones are required, who transports it? Blood transports it to the specific organ or to the specific tissue where it is required. Next is distribution of heat. Now blood helps in keeping the temperature of our body uniform. How? By distributing heat. So these were the functions of blood as transport. Now let us study protection by blood. In protection by blood, the first point is formation of a clot. So whenever there is a cut in any of the blood vessels, the, when blood oozes out of that cut, after some time it forms a clot. Now this clot helps in two ways. First is by preventing excess loss of blood because now the clot is formed, blood cannot move out. So excess loss of blood is prevented and second it prevents the entry of harmful bacteria and germs inside our body. The second function of blood is that it's WBC that is white blood corpuscles or white blood cells engulfs the bacteria and hence it protects our body from the bacteria which may have entered our body. Third is it produces antibodies and antitoxins. Antibodies is something which protect us from any foreign organism that enters our body, any bacteria that enters our body and kills it. And antitoxins are those substances which kills the toxic substances or poisonous substances that, that may enter our body. Now let us study the composition of blood. It can be divided into two that is plasma and cellular components. Now plasma is the fluid constituent. It constitutes 55 to 60% of blood. The next is cellular elements, which is composed of RBC, red blood cells, WBC, white blood cells and blood platelets. And this constitutes around 40 to 45% of the blood. Now, talking about plasma, plasma contains 90 to 92% of water. Then it contains 7 to 8% of proteins. Then it contains 1% of organic salts like sodium chloride and sodium bicarbonate. It contains other substances in traces like glucose, amino acid, fibrinogen, hormones, etc. Now children, you should remember 
that that plasma from which the protein fibrinogen has been removed is termed as serum now children let us study about the cellular elements the first is red blood cells which is also known as erythrocyte second is wbc that is white blood cells which is also known as leukocyte and third is blood platelets which is also known as thrombocytes in our next video we'll study in detail about all three of them till then Keep watching Zenit tutorials and keep learning. If you have liked our video, please do not forget to like us, give comments in the comment box, please share it with your friends and family and do not forget to subscribe us. Please tap on the bell icon so that you can get notification of our next video. So all the best from Zenit tutorials.